Hello and welcome back people. My name is Reza Afshar. This is Chris Bridgen. Guys, in this video we want to show you a mixture of things, um, especially what science is saying. Um, it's important to know guys that the end time season, we don't know how long that time frame is, but but we can identify that season. And that's what this whole video is about. Let's go to the clip. Like we're saying, guys, if you are new to the channel, we look at scientific evidence, we look at biblical evidence, and we look at video evidence. That is really important. And these three things highlight, they highlight the, the, the end times. And so we're just not getting twitchy about certain big events. So we're showing you these events, but we're not getting twitchy about them. We, we look at the bigger picture and over the last few months, there must have been about 25 or more major floods. And we've got, I'd say the majority of them, um, we've got the video footage for that. And guys, it's on the increase and it's getting worse. Um, and like we keep saying, we don't know when the Lord Jesus will return. Um, we're, we are certainly not setting um, any sort of times or dates, but the Lord Jesus, he teaches us and tells us to know the season and to keep watch. And that is one of the major points of this channel. And week after week, we keep giving you the evidence. And, and, and what you're seeing now is really just a couple of clips of, of, of what's happened recently. And if you want to see the whole uh, footage or, or more video, then please look at the compilations because there's probably 30 or 40 um, sort of clips. Mm. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I just want to add as well to what Res was saying about uh, knowing the season of the end times. You know, Jesus tells us specifically to keep watch yeah. because he'll come like a thief in the night. Mm. If you knew when he was coming, you could just get ready at the time you know when he's coming. But if you don't know when he's coming, that means you've always got to be ready. And you've always got to be prepared and you've got to keep watching. Mm. So that's what we're doing. And that's our job yeah. to bring you the signs uh, that uh, Jesus and the rest of scripture tells us to look out for. Yeah. And it, it does. I think it does involve a bit of spiritual discernment, knowing the end times and mm. knowing the season. Um, but but even if you love the Lord Jesus and follow him and you're not even aware of the end times, it doesn't matter. You know, that's 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 fine. That's 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 fine. But we're saying this to try and wake people up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Guys, many of our viewers uh, really do follow um, science and and guys, so do we. So do we. And a handful of people, mainly I'd say the new viewers, will call us fear mongers. Um, but, guys, it's funny, wasn't it? Fear mongers, fear mongers. But let me ask the science community and the people who say we are fear mongers, I want to ask, I want to ask you a question. If we said to you, if we said to you something extreme like, we should be preparing to leave this planet before destruction comes, that sounds pretty out there, doesn't it, Chris? It does sound. And have we ever said that? No. We haven't said that. So would you think we're crazy and a fear monger if we said that? Yeah, you probably would do. Yeah, yeah. Well, have a look at this headline because we're not saying this, but who's saying this? Stephen Hawkins is saying this. Yeah, so look at the headline. It's exactly what Stephen Hawkins has said. We need to leave Earth or humanity will die. <laughs> so he's saying that we've only got like a thousand years left on the planet. Well, science is saying that. Okay, people, what if we said we had a one in 500 chance of humanity being destroyed next year. Would that be fear mongering? No, but it's a big shout. It's a big shout. Big shout, that one. We're not saying that though, people. Let's have a look at the headline. Dr. Fergus Simpson, a mathematician at the University of Barcelona's Institute of Cosmos Sciences said there was a 0.2% chance of global catastrophe occurring in any given year over the course of the 21st century. And what that really reminded me of is the America stat that they've had eight, one in 500 a year uh, regional events, and that's kind of from mid 2015 to mid 2016. So they've had eight of them, and that's the same percentage, that's the same chance of a global catastrophe mm. from what this um, scientist is saying. So, so. So guys, okay, so, so what's the point of me saying this? Why am I, what am I barking on about? Well, we're just making the point that if, if anything, the science community can smell something is wrong. And, and 
are making sort of bigger global catastrophe, uh, bigger global catastrophe claims than what we are mm. really. Um, so if you want to complain about fear mongering people and you're science minded, then really seriously send your comments to Stephen Hawkins and and and, and you know moan to him. But but it's interesting um, thinking about it like. Like regardless of religion, Stephen Hawking's to say that we sh that we should prepare to leave the planet. Mm. He's effectively <laughs> saying that we're in the end times, um, or in the last days of Earth. You know, if you believe that the Earth has been around billions of years and you've only got like a, you haven't got long left mm. on 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 the planet. That's the end times, isn't it? Surely. Mm. So you know. And that's like without the Bible or scripture. So science is saying that we're in the end times. Mm. And I find that I find that remarkable, really. Because, yeah. Because well, well, I suppose we're seeing it really is. It, it depends what their what their perspective is, whether it's you know, man, man destroying the earth, which is causing this this stuff to happen or the pollutants in the air or, or whether it's just cycles that the earth and the sun go through. I don't know what their, their reasons for saying what they're saying, but what we say it's because it's, it's scripture tells us that mm. it is, you know, mm. that, that, that it is really cause and effect of God's judgment, uh, along with man's obviously destroying of the earth as well. Mm. And the scripture that has to come to pass yeah. in order for us to identify that we're in that season. The trees burning up, the fish dying off, Israel getting the land. I'll tell you what, if there's a scientist out there that can pull all the Bible prophecies together and give us the probability of all this stuff happening at the same time, which it is. I'd love to see a stat on that. I bet it's highly unlikely to impossible uh, for, for, for events to coincide as they are. Yeah. And the scripture says it. Yeah. Highly unlikely to but, impossible. But guys, to so the scientific community, we're on your side because we we, we, we do um, we, we we look at the we look at the information. We have to, mm. and we just but, but as any good scientist will do, as any good scientist will do, they would look at all of the data and put it all together and that is what we do with the bible we put it all together that is why we look at the video evidence the scripture and the scientific reports as well and that's that's what our channel is about mm. all right guys let's look at a short clip at more evidence of the end times australia's great barrier reef has suffered its worst year on record Scientists say global warming has caused the most extreme loss of coral ever seen on the reef a world heritage site Terry Hughes, the director of Australia's Coral Reef Research Centre, says the North has borne the brunt of it. Well, the good news we found from our new map is that there's very low levels of loss of corals in the central and southern section of the Great Barrier Reef. The bad news comes from the north, north of Port Douglas all the way up to Papua New Guinea, where about two-thirds of the corals have died in the last seven months. All right, people, we have a Facebook page. A lot of you know that. And a big, big thank you to those who are sending us wonderful messages. You say some really nice stuff. We love all that. And But you're also keeping us updated with, mm. with, with content that mm. we cover. Mm. So if you look at, you know, if you know our channel, just send us the content yeah. that we report on. And we, we, we actually, we use it. It's really mm. good. And this is, an, this is an example. This article was sent in to us from Edward and Rene Dixon from Benton, Kentucky, and also from Lindsay D. So guys, thank you so much for sending this in. And the headline says that Dollywood employee finds burned Bible page after Tennessee fire. And uh, we actually showed you the fire earlier. Um, it's, it was really, really bad. But let me read you the article. The day after wildfires tore through Gatlinburg, Tennessee, destroying more than 150 structures, killing at least three people and displacing thousands, Isaac McCord was doing his part to help out, picking up debris from the Dollywood Park grounds. Under a park bench, he caught a glimpse of a piece of paper lying in a puddle of water, soggy, seared and torn in two. Isaac was curious enough to pick it up and it says as soon as I got down on the ground I noticed it was a bible verse it was in a puddle of water and I said I want to take care of this the best way I can so I gently scooped it up and carried it out the best I could Isaac sat on the bench where he found the paper and called Misty his co-worker co over in silence the pair poured over the page and the edges of which were burned black, but parts of it on the right side of the page were preserved. 
And it reads, O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire have devoured the pastures of the wilderness and the flames have burned all the trees of the field. And, it, and, and Isaac was saying at first, we did not know what part of the book it was from, but we saw bits and pieces about fire and scorching the land and how the beasts of and how the beasts groaned and roared for help. And we were like, this is unreal. This is unbelievable, Isaac said. We had both fully read it and we looked at each other and I will never forget this moment. We both burst into tears. I was ghost white and we just prayed. There was nothing else to do. Still to this moment, after four hours after that fact, I don't have words for it. And I wanted to share this message because it brought me to tears. This is what Isaac is saying. And he said that by no means I was trying to get social recognition. I would say to anyone who wants to call it fake, call me, please call me. It is something I remember for the rest of my life. So I think it's quite a remarkable story really that you it's have amazing, this, you it? have this mm. tragic, tragic mm. fire. And of all the things that you find as a, as, a, as, a, as a piece of scripture, and of all the scriptures, it talks about the fire, <laughs> the fires, really, yeah. and uh, kind of confirmation of, of, of God being yeah. really there, I suppose, mm. And, mm. and knowing what's happened, really. Well, yeah, it really sort of foretelling what's going to happen, really, isn't it? Mm. Almost sounds, in a way, sounds like a judgment, isn't it? Sounds like a judgment, yeah. Really, doesn't it? It does sound like, yeah, with that piece of scripture, it's yeah. definitely, yeah, mm. I'd say it's definitely a judgment. Mm. Um, but yeah, so we just wanted to show, show that to you. We, we don't want to really go too much into the insight of that one, but we just we just wanted to sort of share that with you. So, but we'd be really interested to know, what do you think, people? Put your comments below about this particular article. We would love, um, definitely mm. love to hear from you on that one. So, mm. all right. I think I do want to cut this video short, Chris, because okay. it's. I want you guys to ponder over that one and let us know what you think. Mm. Um, but um, but always come to the Lord Jesus. If you've got any troubles in your life, come to the Lord Jesus. Um, just in any and every situation, come to Him. Please do that. It's something that I keep reminding myself of. Like, have I handed it to the Lord? And sometimes, no, I haven't. So hand it to the Lord. Mm. Please do that. Very so, important. Yeah. All right, guys. Mm. We love you. And we'll see you soon.